good to go. All right, folks, thank you for coming. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome uh, Professor Giancarlo Portino from uh, University of Calabria. That's uh, southern Italy, where the, you know, the, the boot is used by the front toe of the boot. Uh, nice climate in, in, in southern <laughs> Italy. Um, as you may have seen in the, in the announcements, this area is, is an important object of combination cost, cost between IoT and cloud computing. I know actually Giancarlo from a collaboration we had recently on mobile sensing um, with concentration to human-centric uh, environmental sensing. And so if that's an area you're interested in, please reach out. Uh, without further ado, I'll let you present. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, thanks for inviting me, you know, to, to give this um, this talk, as you mentioned, uh, we started our collaboration uh, through our joint friend Lin Yang from, from China. Indeed, we also published a paper, yeah, a I very interesting one, one. yeah, IEEE IoT Journal, that is a good in factor now, 7.6. So, okay, um, today I will give you, you know, um, a talk uh, that is re strongly related with our research. Uh, uh, trying to integrate uh, agents with IoT. Uh, you know, before uh, going you know, into details of the technical presentation, I'd like to tell you something more about University of Calabria, so where it's located, and my research, research group, just five minutes. Okay, you know the Italian peninsula, right? So Calabria is just the point of the boot. Our university is University of Calabria, is located close to the Cosenza city. Is in, indeed the city of our university is not Cosenza, is a, a, a smaller one that is called Rende. But anyway, every, everyone in, in Italy knows that we are in Cosenza, but we are not in Cosenza. <laughs> so <laughs> our university, anyway, is named with the name of our region is one of the biggest in the South Italy. Uh, we got 40,000 students. We got all, uh, almost all the faculties, apart from uh, um, medicine, that is located here in the University of Magna Grecia in Catanzaro. And uh, uh, there is also architecture, even though we got a kind of architecture in our university that is located in uh, University Mediterranea, that is just in front of Sicily. Just to give you an idea, in the South Italy, we, we, we were speaking about uh, your uh, New York City mayor and the grandparents of uh, you, New York City mayor uh, come from, uh, came from uh, Calabria and Bas uh, Campania and Basilicata, specifically from Benevento and Matera. So, um, that's Italian. Yeah. Professor yeah. Francocchio. <laughs> <laughs> So there is a strong connection, you know, between Calabria, South Italy, and New York City, anyway. Because you are, you are used to have, you know, Italian mayor, you know, so it's... <laughs> okay, so as I told you, our university, you know, is pretty young. Um, it, it, it was founded in 1972. Um, so I was born in 1971, so we share almost the same, the same age. And this is the, the location. Uh, this is our rector. Um, he's gonna, it's 2019 instead of 2017. So it is uh, a campus. Uh, it was the very first campus like university in Italy. So more than 40 years ago, because usually in Italy universities are located in the city, like University of Bologna, you know, using some very, very old, very ancient building. In our case, uh, um, our buildings are pretty modern. As you may see, uh, this is the main entrance. So it is a long bridge. It is 1.2 kilometers bridge. And on the, along the side, you got a lot of buildings called cubes. This is the planimetry of our university. So a long bridge with a lot of cubes uh, containing, you know, offices, classrooms, labs, uh, and so on and so forth. A, pre a pretty new universities. So we, we invested a lot of money over the years uh, to, to build our university. And the university is not completed yet. We are completing, you know, the, the last part of the university, specifically this area, some um, 
you know, big um, residential centers and so on and so forth. But anyway, the, the, the main part of the university is, um, is completed, specifically the bridge, everything around the bridge. As I told you, 40, 000, almost 40,000 students. Um, we have uh, almost all the areas, engineering areas, mathematical, natural, physical science, uh, humanities, economics, business, and law, uh, political science, and pharma. We don't have medicine because medicine is pretty close to us. It's 100 kilometers far away from our university. Many undergraduate and uh, degree courses. Uh, in, in the area I mentioned, almost 1,000 teaching staff, and almost, you know, uh, currently is um, 900 technical and administrative personnel. So, uh, currently we are organized in departments. We don't have faculties anymore, according, you know, to the new um, uh, Italian, Italian law. So, faculties were, you know, removed, and then we got... Um, Departments, each department is able to do both teaching and research, okay? Several uh, centers of excellence. And um, yeah, the global amount of the campus area is uh, 531 acres. So it's a, a huge area. Um, we got a, a, a very huge library, it's the third one in, um, in Europe. And also we got several... Uh, um, Internationalization uh, um, efforts uh, we are we are performing in the last um, in these last uh, ten years, uh, many agreements uh, with you know many institutions all over the world, uh, related also to joint PhD, double degrees, uh, and apart from Erasmus, that is a European, but we also got some uh, extra EU programs uh, to give a scholarship to our students to go extra EU in the US, Canada, Australia, China, and so forth. Okay, just some uh, photo gallery related to some, uh, you know, classroom, lab. Okay, this is a, a fly view of our university. Okay. Uh, Okay, just uh, a couple of minutes uh, to uh, hop. I think that uh, we got problems with compat compatibility issues. Oh, <laughs> we got some compatibility issues anyway. <laughs> yeah, very like. But anyway, I will uh, let me. I will um, save the file in PDF just just to a couple of seconds. Okay. Okay, so uh, my lab uh, is, is uh, uh, of course located in my department. My department is computer engineering, uh, modeling, electronics, and systems. As um, I mentioned during our discussion, uh, it, it is one of the excellent departments in Italy. It's the very first one in the South Italy and the fourth one at the national level. So uh, the mission of our of my lab is... Uh, mainly related to uh, engineering distributed application, distributed systems, based on concepts like uh, mobility, uh, multimedia, multi-sensor um, multi uh, orientation. And uh, uh, here you can find more information, even though the, the site is currently under construction, so we will have a, a new site in, uh, for you know end of this, of this month. This is the research lines uh, we are uh, um, in which we are involved mainly Internet of Things, both from the technology and methodological aspects, agent-based computing, because this is you know my very original uh, research team 
Uh, I started this research team almost 20 years ago. And anyway, uh, we use uh, uh, our methodology based on agent in order to address uh, several issues in the Internet of Things, in the wearable computing, and also in the wireless sensor and actuator um, networks. Currently, we are involved in uh, uh, an important project at the European le level that is called InterIoT. InterIoT uh, aims at developing solution approaches to make uh, heterogeneous IoT systems interoperable. This is, uh, you know, um, an important aim of the European Commission. So, European Commission devoted um, a call to this team. The call was about 50 million euros. So, we, we succeeded. In, indeed, we, we were the, the very first project in, in the ranking, 15 out of 15. So, we, we had uh, 8 million euros. We are 14 partners from all over the Europe. And we are working on an approach that is able to grant interoperability between heterogeneous IoT platforms. I, I will give you some um, more detail later on. Uh, I'm involved at national level, specifically in my region, even though the project is an, a national one, with the Domus project. And the Domus project is supported by the Italian National Research Council. And from the industry side, our main telecommunication company, that is Telecom Italia, that is now called TIM. And then I was involved in many other uh, European and national projects related to IoT. Another one that we are trying to launch, even though this is, was uh, submitted uh, last year, um, hopefully we will succeed. But anyway, uh, if uh, we will not succeed, we will submit it uh, somewhere else. Uh, it is called a Smartware. And uh, Smartware is, you know, in the area of uh, your institute, okay? Um, everything smart, um, everything could be made smart, uh, of course, from, uh, uh, you know, computer science, computer engineering viewpoint, but we also have several use cases that are in the smart port area, uh, smart port mobility in the smart city. So how to share e-bike in a smart way using uh, IoT technology, smart water management. So we got also a test bed where we got several, many sensors to monitor um, a water network, specifically uh, close to Matera in, um, in Basilicata. We got the um, Aquedotto Lucano, that is a company sh um, managing the, the water system of the Basilicata region. And we are interacting with them to have uh, um, the monitoring fully IoT based. And then also smart flooding, risk management, because uh, in, in Calabria uh, we had several episodes related to flooding in which, uh, you know, uh, people died. A lot of people died. Okay, so hopefully maybe, you know, next time if the project will be approved, I will speak to you about the, the smartware framework. Okay, but, you know, the, uh, the focus of this presentation is... Uh, um, is on something else. On something else is on um, on our research. Uh, let's say um, research activity, current research activity. Okay, um, this is the outline. First of all, I'd like to give you a very short introduction about IoT and about my vision on IoT. Very likely, you know, uh, my vision is different from other visions, but uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a vision on which we are building all our research, uh, let's say basic and applied research activity. Then uh, I will focus on uh, the integration between agents and uh, uh, IoT, why such integration could be beneficial to IoT systems. Uh, we'll give you a summary of our research called ECOSOMET. ECOSOMET is a kind of methodology supporting analysis, design, and implementation phases of uh, IoT system development. And then I will show you some use cases. We have several use cases. 
specifically, I will show you the smart university use cases, but I will mention also other use cases like smart street or smart lighting system in which we are involved. And uh, uh, I will conclude and then uh, I'd like to discuss with you about future challenges that I, I, I deem uh, um, they are pretty interesting to address in the very near future. Okay, uh, let's start from a definition because you know that uh, uh, we don't have yet uh, a standard definition of IoT. Um, this is a, a possible definition. I don't like it, but uh, it comes from the te telecommunication uh, area. Uh, you know, IoT is a worldwide you know, network of interconnected heterogeneous objects. They could be sensors, actuators, embedded computers, smart objects, smart devices, and so on and so forth. It's important. They need to be uniquely addressable, and they have to use uh, standard communication protocols. Okay? It, it's a very telecommunication-oriented uh, definition. But anyway, uh, Internet of Things is uh, something that uh, uh, will contain many things, uh, of different nature, such things can be uh, discovered, can be exploited using a network. Okay, uh, among such things, uh, uh, an important building block, basic building block, is the smart object. Okay, it's even harder to provide a standard definition for smart object. Okay, uh, next slide, I will provide you with our definition. But uh, at the very end, uh, you can think about a world in which our daily life objects will be smart, will give us not just, you know, physical services like a table, okay? Sometimes, you know, uh, I'm used to ask a question to my students to say, okay, when it was created, the table, you know, when? Say, so maybe, you know, many thousand years ago, you know? So, but uh, in a lot of thousand years, the function, the basic function of the table. Maybe change it a, a bit the style, and, but the basic function of the table remained unchanged, completely unchanged, okay? Same thing for the chair, same thing, you know, for, for many things we are used to use in our daily life, okay? <coughs> now we could have a, a change, a big change, okay? Not just having new objects like, you know, the smartphone that is not new anymore, like the smartwatch or some smart gadget, but we will have old conventional objects that will be turned into smart objects. Okay, this is going to be uh, challenging, interesting, and maybe um, it will deserve uh, uh, not just research but you know investment of a, a lot of money in order to uh, make them become real. Just to give you some uh, you know um, estimation. Right now, we got, uh, um, at the worldwide level, we got 10 billion devices that could be, could be considered smart, even though they are not smart at all. So it means that 1.5 per person. In a couple of years, 2020, this is a, a rough estimation, we will have 50 billion devices, maybe a bit less, a bit more. But maybe in the near future, we will not have billions, but maybe trillions. Okay? It means that uh, 8 per person. Okay? In which area? The main ones will be utilities, healthcare, automotive, consumer electronics, but you can have a lot of different ones. Utilities uh, are in, in smart cities. So in, in, a, in, in a sense that uh, in the near future, uh, and, and, and this is you know, uh, very likely an unstoppable trend, in the near future, we will have uh, uh, cities with a lot of smart systems inside. Okay. And uh, uh, not just in these main uh, IoT domains, but also in other domains that very likely will uh, um, become, uh, I would say, uh, more famous as soon as we will be able to have uh, different testbed, uh, not just uh, in our labs, but uh, real testbed in which we can experiment many things. Another point that is very important, uh, apart from the devices, Services will be the real IoT drivers. So very likely uh, we will have many devices, but if the devices will not be able to provide interesting services, you know, the device will not we will, will be uh, you know useless. Let's say Google Glasses. How many of us got Google Glasses? Almost no one. Okay, you know they are very nice. They are very interesting. They could potentially provide services, but they don't, currently they don't provide any service. They cannot, 
They cannot because they need to interact with an environment that is able to provide services. And we don't live currently in environments, smart environments, able to provide services. Okay? Maybe you know, in the near future, we will uh, reuse Google Glasses because uh, uh, they could be very useful, even though we don't like glasses. You know, so if uh, we could get rid of glasses, you know, you, you, you got glasses, I got glasses, but uh, I don't put glasses because I don't like them. Okay, so uh, this is another motivation because uh, uh, Google Glasses didn't uh, have any success so far. Okay, let's go back to, uh, you know, my vision about uh, IoT that is much more a computer science oriented vision than a telecommunication one. So I'd like to define uh, uh, Internet of Things like a loosely coupled decentralized system of cooperating smart objects. So uh, the concept is strongly based on uh, smart object, and smart object is something defined in this way, digital, physical, autonomous, so uh, it is not just a buzzword, but it's an, a fundamental word, autonomous, uh, augmented with several uh, capabilities, sensing actuation, of course processing, um, capability of storing information, and of course to interact through networks. So uh, our smart object will be able uh, not just to provide services to humans, but to interact with each other. And this is an, another important fundamental uh, shift of paradigm, because now we think about uh, smart object as uh, uh, isolated, standalone object. I can query them, I can receive information, but they are not able to speak with each other, to create a self-driven uh, ecosystem. This very likely will not be a near future, but uh, you know, a pretty far away future, like you know, in uh, the Matrix movie or in the Terminator movie, okay. science fiction. But we are, you know, in the in the pathway to reach that point, in the very pathway to reach that point, because we are speaking about machine to machine, machine to machine protocols, machine to machine interaction. So we are trying to pave a way to let them be autonomous. To let them, I mean machines, smart objects, construct systems, applications, services, and so on and so forth. Now, anyway, uh, maybe fortunately, the target you know, of uh, the services provided by uh, smart object or smart object based IoT system are humans. Okay? Maybe in a uh, future that is a far away future, uh, will not be humans anymore. Of course, uh, in order to uh, provide, uh, let's say, a more concrete vision of what is a smart object, we need to define an architecture. What's the architecture of a smart object? This is a very general one, very general one. So you have the brain, the brain, it means the a processing unit and decision making process. So the, in, in, in our vision, the decision making is performed locally, but you can also virtualize uh, you know, the smart objects, so you can put everything on the cloud or on the edge, okay? But this is the basic architecture, and of course you need a communication block to interact through networks. You could also have more than one radio in your device, if you think about your smartphone, the smartphone got more than one radio, okay? Of course you need uh, uh, augmentation devices, it depends on the functionalities, on the services the smart object is able to provide. And then you got two important things, physical services, remember about, you know, the, the table, the physical service, or, you know, the door, another physical service, and the cyber ones. So the table, as soon as you get closer to the table, that is able to understand that someone is closer, and then if you are too fast, maybe the, the table can uh, tell you, look, go slower, because you risk to, you know, to impact me, okay? Or... The table can recognize people. The tables can count uh, objects and can recognize the object on the table. Okay? Now it is not able to do it. Maybe in the near future, we will go you know, in some uh, shop and uh, buy uh, a smart table, a smart chair, a smart everything. Okay? So this is going to um, become a reality um, in uh, a very short time. Now we need also a kind of reference architecture, because uh, if our aim is to develop systems, IoT systems, we need to have also a kind of methodology. 
to do so. Okay? First of all, uh, um, in the literature, several researchers uh, proposed uh, reference architecture. This is a very general one. Okay? At the bottom, you got a smart object, several kinds of smart objects. Whatever smart object you, you can think about, you can uh, uh, turn such object in a smart one. Okay? Then you got internet that is not internet uh, of humans. You got an internet. Could be a local one, could be a metropolitan one, could be a one other area network, but it, it's fundamental. It's fundamental because we need something, a substratum through which we can, let's say, basically send and receive information. Atop the internet, for our internet of things, we have another level that is even more fundamental than um, the middleware for the internet of humans. That, that is the middleware for IoT systems. Middleware means providing, uh, you know, a substratum, let's say, software substratum uh, on top of networks, providing basic services that are naming, discovery, management of objects, high-level interactions. And then the application level, where we can uh, um, build application. Another important point is uh, IoT systems are systems uh, completely different in nature with respect to uh, conventional distributed systems. In conventional distributed systems, you already have uh, um, a well-established notion of uh, scale. You say, how many processors do you have in your distributed systems? 10? 100, 1,000, 1 million, according to the number, you can define the scale of your system, of your distributed system. We don't have any consolidated notion of scale in IoT. Because in IoT, it's important to have also the density, to consider the density. In distributed systems, density is not so important. Okay? It's not so important. It was explored in some researches, but anyway, density is not so important. It is very important in cyber physical systems. Not just processors, but objects containing processors, but located, situated in environments. Because you could have in this room how many smart objects. Currently, maybe we just got our smartphones. You, you got some uh, Fitbit, uh, some smartwatch. Uh, you know, everything here is not smart. Okay? Again, apart from our smartphones that are not smart anyway. Okay? But maybe in the near future, here we will have, uh, let's say, 1,000 smart objects. If you consider the table, the chair, the ceiling, the floor, um, the wall, uh, everything, even the bottle or the mug, the pen. Okay? And uh, you got, you know, uh, a pretty... Um, small space with a high density of objects or cyber physical objects okay so we need maybe to understand much more these two dimensions physical dimension if you consider the smart object so you can go from a smart pen that is pretty small to a smart city if you consider the smart city as a wall in that case it's a smart object of course uh, a large scale smart object. But what about the density? You know, it depends. It depends on, on the object the smart city is able to contain. And uh, very likely could be dense, could be less dense, could be more dense. It depends. Okay, it depends. We need to understand better this concept, we need to define it better. And also, you can have uh, sparse settings in which, uh, if you think about, uh, let's say, uh, as smart as body, uh, how many sensors you got? You you could have, okay. In you know lab experimentation, you could even put twenty sensors on your body, but very likely you know in your normal life you can work with twenty sensors. Maybe you you should uh, have some smart textile reducing the number of sensors. You know, but again, this is important. I I don't have uh, yet uh, you know equations uh, able to capture you know, uh, physical dimension and density, we are working on these, let's say, equations in such a way to provide uh, some insight. But uh, I think that it's much more suitable to experiment, 
okay? Because uh, this is much more experimental uh, um, area than a theoretical one, even though no, theory methodology are fundamental. But in this area, maybe we need to experiment much, much, much more. What's this, the state of the art in this area? You know, uh, if you'd like to develop an IoT system, you can start by scratch. It's up to you. But uh, uh, you can start using some middleware. If you'd like to have, a, a, let's say, more rapid prototyping of your system, if you use some middleware, maybe the middleware will be able to help you in this task. To be more rapid, uh, to be more reliable, uh, and so on and so forth. Okay? What's the state of the art? Uh, we are, I, I would say, uh, at the border between the second and third generations. We don't have yet the third generation. But we got, for sure, the first generation that was not focused on IoT, but was focused on smart environments, the concept of smart environments. You can read several names of middleware, smart bits, to wear ambient algorithms, and, and so on and so forth. They are not maintained anymore. Okay? They were projects, uh, you know, and they produced interesting things, but they are not maintained anymore. The second generation was based on IoT. So the aim was, let's try to create smart objects, put smart objects all together to create ecosystems of smart objects, okay? The most important, I would say the most important ones, uh, you can also find others, okay? But the most important ones are Ubicom, FedNet, smart products. They are all, they are all projects, uh, European projects. FedNet, uh, smart products were FP7 projects. FedNet was a kind of uh, European project you become but was not a European project. But, uh, you know, uh, very interesting because uh, they explored not only the concept of IoT, but specifically how to build a middleware in such a way to support IoT development. Uh, I'm not going, of, of course, to discuss about this table, just to give you this message. Uh, we compared uh, all, the, um, all such systems. Here you can find our publication in which we compare in detail. It's uh, almost 30 pages paper long, so th there is a lot of information inside. But Voyager Smart, it's first generation. You become FedNet Smart pro 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 Products, second generation. Then we got our middleware. I'm, I'm going to speak about our middleware called Ecoso. Ecoso is based on agents. And as you may, at the, at, at the first side, you know, uh, if you consider several parameters, we define it from system programming to discovery uh, to knowledge management and so on and so forth, all such middlewares are heterogeneous. They are not able to speak, to speak with each other, so they are incompatible. Okay? This is not just for the middleware currently in the IoT world, but it, it is for everything. Uh, the IoT world currently is massively heterogeneous. At, the, at, the, at several levels, at the device level, at the networking level, at the middleware level, at the application level, at the data level. Massively heterogeneous, okay? At some level, you don't have even uh, a standard. At the networking level, you got several standards. But at the, at the data level, you, got, uh, you don't have standard. You got uh, you know, uh, a kind of uh, entropic situation in which you know, uh, it's, dif it's very difficult to uh, put things together. We are, we are aiming at this in our Inter-IoT project. The point of our research is the following. We'd like to develop an IoT system. We need to start with uh, a methodology. Currently, there are no methodologies supporting the development of IoT systems. Because uh, an IoT system is not only totally a software system. An IoT system is also an hardware system. So there is an integration, a complex integration between software components and hardware components. So we cannot reuse the software engineering methodologies because software engineering methodologies are much more oriented to software, to the development of software. IoT systems are both hardware and software. So are systems of systems, okay? So if you'd like to uh, define some general requirements, you can try to categorize such requirements in two big categories, system level and things level. 
system level uh, is very similar, pretty similar to decentralized systems. Things level is uh, very specific to things, to smart objects. Okay. Um, so these uh, four requirements, heterogeneity, augmentation variation, decentralized management, and dynamic evolution, are uh, characterize uh, things. Okay? And, and we need to deal with such requirements when we have to develop an IoT system. Okay? So uh, we need to deal with heterogeneity because IoT, uh, the IoT world is very heterogeneous, but we need to have interoperability when we'd like you know, to create an ecosystem, an ecosystem of smart objects. We need to have a, a kind of a method to uh, augment our smart object. For example, the smart table will give you some service, but if we'd like to have other kind of services, we need to put other device inside. Okay? And the, the, the smart table should be able to be augmented in an easy way. Cannot be static. Should be dynamic. So the evolution should be dynamic. And the evolution could also be dynamic in the sense that the smart object is able to learn. Like, uh, you know, some entity that we, uh, in a little while, we'll call uh, uh, agent, able to learn by exper experience. So uh, the smart object could be able to understand many things, to share knowledge with other smart objects in such a way to evolve, okay? This dynamic evolution um, that could be pre-programmed or could be, let's say, self-learned, okay? So the, the final aim uh, will be, um, you know, to, to, to develop self-evolving smart objects. And this is our final aim, OK? Another important um, point issue is how to manage in a decentralized way a so complex system of system. Of course, we cannot reuse methodology coming from internet, because currently internet is uh, uh, controlled in a centralized way. OK? So we need to put uh, autonomicity beyond uh, uh, autonomous behavior and uh, uh, cognitive behavior inside uh, um, the IoT in, in such a way to have uh, a system that is self-controlled. If you think about trillions of objects, you cannot manage in a centralized way trillions of objects. Okay, So um, this is a still um, a huge research issue. Okay. OK, in our research, you know, um, we try to integrate agents with IoT to use the agent-based computing. Um, maybe you know that you know, an agent could be seen as a, um, a software entity, could be also you know, a, even a, a physical entity, able to uh, take autonomous decision making and able to interact with other objects. The ABC paradigm, the agent based computing paradigm, was very successful in the last 20 years, not only uh, in, you know, um, in academy, in, in the academy. Okay? We have uh, agent based framework also used in industry. For example, Telecom Italia produced a framework very famous called Jade, based on FIPA standard, Foundation on Intelligent Physical Agents. And Jade was used, is used to create commercial products, OK? And agents have been used extensively to develop uh, many applications in different application domain. What are the characteristics of agents? Are the same characteristics, characteristics we, we would like to have for smart objects? Autonomy, social ability, responsiveness, proactiveness, mobility. These are characteristics um, that are very suitable for smart objects. And this was a motivation to try to um, model smart objects uh, using the agent-based paradigm. What was the result in our, in our uh, research? The result was, uh, first of all, a middleware, later on a methodology. Here you can find uh, 
specific information related to our middleware. Uh, ECOSO stands for agent-based cooperating um, smart objects. It is a middleware that is able uh, to um, provide uh, you know, uh, many facilities uh, um, to create uh, IoT systems based on the agent paradigm. This is, uh, uh, these are the layers of our middleware. There is a high level smart object architecture. Then we reuse uh, the Jade multi-agent system platform, both the Jade version and the JADEX version. JADEX is a BDI model-based Jade version. It's very good for agent based on AI. And uh, it runs on PC, but it runs also on smartphone. It runs also on uh, sensors, okay? Specifically, um, Oracle Sunspot sensors. But, uh, you know, everything uh, um, is also supported by uh, sensor, uh, by networks of sensors and actuators through other two um, uh, middleware that we developed over the last uh, 10 years, Spine that is uh, focused on wearable computing and BMF that is focused on building, indoor building monitoring. So we will have, uh, you know, uh, agents. This is the architecture of our agent that is uh, a specific and extended Jade agent. And then we are able to uh, program a smart object like, uh, you know, an agent uh, in the sense that we could have uh, a several subsystems. Each subsystem is able to deal with the specific functionalities of our smart object. You know, the activity, so task management, so uh, performing activities, managing knowledge base, so the knowledge of the smart object, uh, managing the communication of smart object, and uh, managing the devices. Just to give you um, to this slide, I will not go into detail about smart object discovery, but the discovery of smart object is a, a fundamental method in an IoT system, okay? The discovery should be decentralized. Through the discovery, you can find not just smart object, but also services provided by smart object. And this activity is, uh, you know, uh, I would say allocation-based activity is uh, uh, very different from discovery of web services. Because in the discovery of web services, you don't care about the location of, of the web service. You just care about uh, what the web service is able to provide you. Okay, but very likely, if you are here, you would like to understand which kind of smart object would like to give you a service, uh, you will not query, you know, the other building. You will query this room, this space. Okay, so uh, again, uh, we are uh, in the IoT domain, we are in a cyber physical world, and we need to understand uh, how to enhance uh, or on the other hand, how to define a new mechanism developed in other area. Uh, but anyway, you can reuse something from uh, you know, the, the web service area, not everything. OK, I'd like, OK, I will skip this, because I'd like to give you just some um, idea about our methodology. Um, again. Our aim is development of IoT systems. In order to do so, uh, as a, I mean, it is possible. Uh, you could start by scratch. Okay. You got your sensor, you got your components, you got your languages, you got your platforms, and then you, you start putting everything together using a non-systematic approach. At the very end, you, you will be able to create a system. Okay. But, you know, uh, our research, uh, you know, uh, the, the viewpoint is... Uh, I would say IoT system engineering. And if your viewpoint is from the IoT system engineering uh, perspective, you need to define an approach that is a systematic approach. Okay, we define an approach that is, uh, a, a, I would say, uh, a simple yet effective one based on the concept of model driven development. It means that uh, we will have uh, um, 
we have a development um, process uh, constituted by three phases, analysis, design, implementation. It is not a, a waterfall one, but is uh, an iteration uh, process model. Okay. So you can iterate phases from each phase, you can go back, you can go forward. Okay. So it's a, an iteration um, model. At the analysis phase, uh, you perform a modeling of your system at a very high level. In order to do so, you will reuse our meta model. I will show you the meta model. So each phase will have a meta, a reference meta model, through which you can create your models at each phase. As soon as you create a model at the very first phase, you can semi-automatically translate your model from one phase to another. This is the concept of model-driven development. If uh, you don't have such an approach, as soon as uh, you, got, uh, you perform the analysis phase, you got some artifacts. But then, in which way you transform your artifacts from analysis level artifacts to the design level? You don't know. Each time you have to invent a new way to do it. Depending on what? You know, depending on the part of you'd like to use, depending on the, the function and functional requirements you got, and so forth. And then if you got a design that is you know, even a very detailed design, and then you have to implement, you have to consider which kind of language you have to use, which kind of specific platforms, which kind of specific hardware. Okay? It's going to be a very complex task. Without a methodology, for sure, you will not be able to create a complex ecosystem. Or the complex ecosystem you could be able to create, very likely will be very error prone not reliable, and so on and so forth. Recently, uh, they accepted a paper. Uh, it's, uh, it's already online in the IEEE Transaction System and Cybernetic uh, Systems, uh, discussing into details about this uh, methodology. What's the state of the art? The state of the art is that you don't have any methodology yet. The only one is the one proposed by us. Because very likely, in this domain, the, the IoT domain is very heterogeneous. So it is approached from uh, you know, different areas, not just from the computer science, the computer engineering. It is approached from many different areas, civil engineering or transportation engineering. You know? But very likely, you know, uh, they need to be integrated in a systematic way in order to be able to create a methodology. Okay? And you need you know, several experience and several skills in order to create a methodology. So, you know, this is the process. Analysis, design, implementation. I, I simplified, of course, a bit the process because we don't have any iteration. But I, I, as I told you, the process is an iterative process. Then in each phase, you can use specific meta models. Each meta model is able to support that phase, is able to support you in producing your models, OK? Now, let's assume that you are able to produce uh, your model at the analysis level, in which you are able to depict your uh, IoT-based systems, OK? In which way you translate your model into a design model. In our approach, uh, you will uh, use another meta model in such a way to have uh, the translated model that is uh, compliant with the design meta model. This translation could be done uh, automatically. The same, uh, the same game, you got the design model. OK, the design model uh, was produced according to the design meta model. Then you'd like to have the implementation version of your design model. OK. If you got the meta model of your target platform, in our case, our target platform is called Jacoso, then you can translate your design into your implementation. Now I have to give you an idea, because you know, uh, the approach is, could be theoretical, but it's not theoretical at all. Because model-driven developer is not, is not something theoretical. It's something that uh, was applied uh, since uh, many years ago was mainly applied to software, to software development, OK? So this is our meta model related to smart object. You see, this is the concept of smart object. 
this vast object could have physical properties, status, location, fingerprinting to identify, specifically identify the object. The object could have uh, one or more devices. The object uh, could provide uh, one or more services. And then, of course, uh, uh, users. A smart object could be a specific user. So a smart object is also a user. Okay? And another user could be humans, even pets. Could be a, a, another third party digital system. And here you got a kind of aggregation um, relationship. Uh, this uh, uh, allow, allows you to create aggregation of smart objects. So you could have a smart object that is an aggregate of uh, parts. Okay? Okay, this is just the meta model. If you instantiate this meta model, you got, uh, you produce a specific model. Could be a smart table, could be a smart chair, could be uh, an even complex system. But of course, uh, here you don't have any technological uh, concept. You just got the analysis of your system. It's a kind of desiderata. I'd like this system, because the structure of this system will be in this way, three smart objects interacting, providing a given number of services. Okay? If you're able to do so, what's the next step? Of course, the next step is to go from the analysis phase to the design. So the design, you need to go down, you need to specialize, because you are, you are going towards a real platform. Because at the analysis level, you are not at the real platform level, okay? Then here you can use several meta models. It depends on the design meta model you define it. In our case, we define it two meta models, one for simulation purposes, one for implementation purposes. So we are able to, tra to translate models at that level in models at this level, and then in models at this level. It means that the real implementation of the system. Okay? Everything is made, of course, is not fully automatic, it's semi-automatic. Because if you have to write down a procedure, you have to write down the procedure. Okay? A piece of code, you need to write down a piece of code. Okay? But the overall infrastructure will be produced uh, automatically. Just to give you an idea, this is, uh, no, the base, this one. This is uh, the model, the meta model, meta model at the design level based on an agent-oriented approach, a specific agent-oriented approach that is ours. Okay? As you may see, this is the smart object. The same one of the previous meta model, but it is not a general one. It is a smart object based on the model, on, on the ECOSO model. It is a, a specific one with specific components, the knowledge-based management system, the device management subsystem, the behavior, because the, the object could have several behaviors that could have several tasks, and so on and so forth. This is you know, a refinement from the analysis level model to the design model. This refinement could be done automatically. Then if you got this uh, refinement and use uh, the final platform uh, meta model that is uh, based on Jade, then uh, you could be able to create your system. This is, you know, an approach that uh, is able to drive uh, development of IoT systems. Now, of course, I will show you an, a, a concrete example. The concrete example will be our smart unical system that we developed at Tower University. But indeed, we also developed other systems, other ecosystems, a smart system in our city, and a smart lighting system in another one that is indeed um, the city hosting the university. So Hosenza is not the city hosting the university. Rende is the city hosting the university. Okay? And uh, uh, this is under development. So uh, very likely in next year, we will have the, ver the very first test bed. Okay, uh, this is uh, um, the smart unical case study. This is the bridge of our university, and this is our department. So our department is in uh, six different cubes, eight different cubes. So this uh, uh, smart unical um, 
um, according to our approach, is a smart object. A smart object that aggregates uh, three sub-smart objects. One is the smart bridge. Another one is the smart department, smart DMS, our department. And another one is, uh, at a small scale, is our lab. So we got three different smart objects, small, medium, and large scale smart objects. Each of such smart objects will provide services. So according to our me methodology at the analysis level, we need to define services. So uh, these are the services. Smart bridge, a uh, smart vibration service, able to detect vibration and to provide information according to some uh, threshold we can uh, define. Uh, if uh, you know, the vibration uh, overtakes such threshold, uh, we can uh, notify some manager through some uh, alert, okay, to some uh, alarm messages. Smart DMS, smart monitoring, specifically monitoring of uh, uh, indoor spaces. And this is our lab. In our lab, we are able to monitor condition of the room, but also the wellness of people. So we are able to understand activity of people and uh, suggest how to uh, differently um, uh, behave in order to uh, have, uh, you know, more wellness. Okay, if you are two hours, uh, uh, you know, in front of a computer, so this is, I uh, can tell you, okay, look, take a walk, okay? This is just to simplify everything. <laughs> okay, this is, you know, the diagram related to the uh, smart object. This is, of course, uh, at the analysis level, okay? So we got the smart unique smart object, we got uh, uh, as an aggregation of smart demons, smart bridge, and the smart demons got, uh, you know, the, the smart uh, lab and specifically our smart senses lab. And of course, uh, each uh, smart object is able to provide one or more services. For example, this is the smart bridge. This is the instantiation of the meta model, specifically for the smart bridge. Then you have uh, location, physical property, you, you see dimension, um, 1,220 1, meters, you got the fingerprint, for example, this is the ID of the smart bridge, you got the status, so the status is characterized by the current vibration and the current presence, so we are able to detect vibration, but also presence of people on the bridge. And the services, um, I highlighted only the uh, vibration service. And each service could have several operations. Get vibration in a specific position in the bridge or uh, performing the overall um, vibration analysis. And here you have uh, devices, one or more devices. Usually we have laptop with a set of sensors located in a specific point of the bridge. The installation is uh, not static, but could be, um, is uh, let's say mobile, okay? Uh, when we need to, you know, perform some measure and we move uh, with these um, mobile stations. Uh, another interesting thing, you can uh, define uh, one or more choice indicator for each of the operation of, of a service. And these are, of course, uh, the non-functional requirements at the analysis level that you have to fulfill at the implementation level. Um, I'll be very rapid now. Uh, this is the design level uh, model that we produced according to the previous one. You see, the smart bridge, then uh, it's different with respect to the other one. But, you say, you see. How to pass from this one to this one? They are pretty different. We got, of course, automatic rules able to allow this transformation, okay? So, analysis level model can be translated in this model. Why we perform this translation? Because at the design level, we uh, would need a more refined, more specific model. Because after the design level, we need to implement the system. We cannot implement directly the, the analysis model because it, it's too general, okay? 
And uh, this is the final implementation. This is the final implementation. At the end, uh, you know, the, the, the services, the services will uh, be transformed in tasks of our agents. So from a, a very high level view to a very low level view in which, you know, such services will be really implemented as tasks of, uh, of our software agents. Okay, I will skip the other objects just to give you, okay, some technical details. This is uh, an installation we performed on, uh, um, on our bridge. You can see there, is, there are several, uh, uh, there are sensors and uh, the base station and the same installation, we perform the same installation on several points of, of the bridge. And everything is coordinated by a centralized uh, PC. Okay, it's a kind of a hierarchical uh, infrastructure. This is an installation in one of the room. Uh, it, it is the um, seminar room of our department. So we use uh, heterogeneous devices. Um, some devices based on TinoS, some devices based on, on Java, okay, but um, everything uh, will be made uh, homogeneous by, by uh, the ACOSO framework, okay? So you don't need to deal with heterogeneity. The framework is able to provide you uh, facilities to deal with heterogeneity. Okay, and this is the Smart Sensical Lab. You can see, you know, the, the wearable system able to you know, a sensor on the thigh, a sensor on the waist, and a sensor on the wrist, able to uh, detect uh, activity of people. So standing still, walking, running, falling, and so on and so forth. So we are able to detect in real time uh, activity of people. Another, another um, use case was uh, developed in, uh, in Cosenza, involving uh, several uh, streets in Cosenza and also several squares. This is, uh, uh, you know, this is uh, um, the, the city center of Cosenza. You see this um, avenue, Giacomo Mancini Avenue. And these are all the installation of our uh, uh, IoT device. Specifically, we used uh, um, several base stations, so computational unit. Uh, the computational unit uh, are Raspberry, Raspberry Pi 2. Now we are going to do some enhance to have a Raspberry Pi 3. And uh, we also use uh, Wasp mods, very good from Libellium. And uh, uh, this is an example. Uh, specifically, um, uh, the IoT devices are able to detect temperature, humidity, uh, luminosity, uh, pollution, sound, uh, and some of them are equipped with micro cameras. So we are able not, not only to, you know, to collect data, but to perform uh, um, computing at the edge. Okay, because we got uh, computational units in which uh, we got agents, the ACOSO agents, performing uh, edge computing, okay? And of course, we also got, you know, the, a base station then we can collect all data. Some of them are stored only locally, others are, you know, um, collected at the base station level. And of course, we use many different um, uh, IoT devices. In, in this case, uh, uh, specifically sensors, we don't have, um, uh, in, in this case, uh, we, we don't have actuators, okay? We don't have actuators. We just have, you know, um, IoT devices for monitoring um, purposes. Okay, let's conclude. Okay, in our research, uh, we are promoting agent-based, an agent-based approach to develop IoT systems. So the agent-based approach is not only, let's say, technical, but it is mainly methodological. In the sense that we defined a process based on this model-driven development concept, and we are able to create from an high-level model to create an implementation. Okay? And this is going to be, in my opinion, 
fundamental for the next generation of IoT systems. Okay, fundamental. Apart from specific, you know, functionalities, specific services, when you have to manage a complex system, you cannot start by scratch. You need a systematic methodology. <coughs> so, apart the novelty that this, you know, uh, the integration between agent and IoT, in my opinion, the main novelty is uh, the methodology. Okay, the methodology able to um, support system development. A missing point, a current missing point that indeed we didn't address yet. Because, you know, uh, I would say that I'm not a security guy. <laughs> I'm not involved in security research. But currently, um, we created a team between my university and the University Mediterranean region, that is uh, the university just in front of the Messina Strait, in front of Sicily, just the very point uh, uh, of the boot. Uh, and then we are uh, um, exploring the concept of using trust to develop uh, security mechanism for uh, um, IoT-based multi-agent systems. Uh, it's an ongoing research. Uh, we submitted a, a paper um, a couple of days ago for a journal, so very likely, you know, um, I, I, I will give you some more detail uh, maybe in, in my next my next talk, but anyway, we will be in touch. So I, I, I could share, you know, the, this paper. Um, it's interesting because it, it's a, you know, uh, the use of trust mechanism to provide uh, security, security in uh, um, IoT system is, is becoming a, a hot topic, a hot topic. The main problem is that uh, we don't have test beds. That's the problem then we have to simulate everything, or, or let's say almost everything. We could, uh, you know, have some real data, but uh, we, we, sti we, we don't have yet uh, significant testbed where to uh, experiment with such concepts. This is maybe the main, uh, the main motivation because we don't have, uh, we don't have uh, uh, a lot of research in this direction. Even though, you know, um, it's becoming, it's becoming uh, an interesting, uh, as I said, um, a hot topic right now. Okay, apart from some ongoing work that is, indeed is not ongoing anymore, because <laughs> this was ongoing uh, one year ago, so now we got already some uh, publication in this direction, specifically here in uh, computing and uh, in science and engineering, it's a magazine, journal magazine by IEEE. So here we proposed, uh, um, uh, let's say, um, an instantiation of the methodology I presented, uh, but for simulation of IoT systems, not just for implementing the system. And this could be very interesting, to put the simulation in the loop. If you put the simulation in the loop, you could be able to test your system before your final deployment. And if you use some... Uh, very, let's say, realistic simulator. Uh, anyway, at the very end, when you got the implemented system, you need to test it anyway, okay? But if you have a simulation step before the deployment, you could be able to understand if, uh, you know, you could have some functional problems, some non-function problem, because you risk to miss some non-functional requirement, okay? So after simulation, then you can, you know, you can reiterate simulation, but then when you are pretty sure that everything could work, then you can deploy. But anyway, after deploy, you have to test. Would you, would you want to do that? Would you want to simulate an idea of Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, okay, we can simulate uh, at several levels. We can sim simulate at the networking levels. We can simulate at the transport layer. We can simulate at the application level. Uh, we integrated our model, that is the ECOSO model, atop, um, uh, on top of the Omnet++ simulator. So it was a kind of a translation of uh, uh, the architecture atop Omnet++. Doing so, we are able to create uh, 
ecosystem of smart objects under simulation. And then we can, uh, again, explore um, performance indices at different levels. Could be uh, delay, could be throughput, or uh, could be reliability, or could be something that is uh, missing deadlines, and so on and so forth. It depends on the layer. OK, last slide. <laughs> Research challenges. Uh, maybe this is, you know, the, I would say the most important moment because uh, I can receive feedback. And, uh, you know, uh, each of such points, in my opinion, are uh, um, fundamental, even, you know, the one that is what else. So, you, 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 you know, you, I can have your feedback, just understand what else, because I just thought about the the very first five points, but you know there are a lot of issues around the IoT world. Uh, the first one is about the social Internet of Things. This idea of social IoT was uh, proposed uh, the very first time in this paper, 2012, by my colleague um, Antonio Yer is from University Mediterranean in Reggio Calabria, in, in Calabria. Um, very, very good researcher in the, the tele, but he's from telecommunication area. So we are always discussing you know, about different perspectives from computer science or telecommunication. But the idea of social internet of things is very interesting. Uh, should be, you know, uh, made more concrete. Uh, in our paper, for example, we explore some concept of um, sociality. But again, this could be um, even more important when we will have a realistic test bed. For example, I was in, I was in one in uh, November, um, and I discussed a bit with some guys uh, that uh, are being um, are involved in the deployment uh, of uh, the um, Anjou Smart City. Alibaba invested a lot of money for making Anjou as a smart city. Very likely, in a couple of years, we will have you know a huge because Anjou is about uh, 13, 14 million of people, uh, a huge uh, um, smart city, and in which we can explore concretely uh, such um, concept of, of sociality. Evolution by learning is something that, in my opinion, uh, not, not right now from, let's say, a commercial viewpoint or technological viewpoint, but in the near future, we need to go towards um, autonomic cognitive uh, IoT systems, because uh, we will not be able to manage them using uh, the internet-based approach. We will not be able to do it. Um, opportunistic services, uh, we just submitted a paper. Um, it's a research between my group and the group from University of Bologna. And uh, in, in this case, we use a simulation, unfortunately, because, you know, it's difficult to find a uh, uh, large scale test bed for IoT. We just, we just have a small test bed, small scale test bed, or medium ones. Even, you know, the smart street in Cosenza is, a, I would say, a, a small one. Okay. Um, opportunistic services. The idea is the following In the future, we will have environments, uh, I would say, densely reached of IoT devices. So in this room, we got 20 IoT devices. Maybe in 10 years, we will have 200, 2,000. But uh, on, a, on a street, we will have thousands of IoT devices. Then uh, we should think about how to create services dynamically. Not, the idea is not to design them a priori, but let them, let the system create services according to the interaction with humans, according to behavior profiling, according to methods that will be embedded into the IoT system. And then you can, uh, the, your system could create new services like in a spatial temporal bubble. They could be activated, they could rest for a while, and then they could disappear. But the, 
Our research is currently at this level. We design uh, services and then we simulate how to activate them in this uh, spatial temporal bubble, serving humans or serving other objects. Okay? But now we are working on this, uh, you know, um, future step that is uh, how to create service in a massively populated environment in which you got a lot of IoT devices. Because if you don't have a lot of IoT devices, maybe this concept cannot be uh, made concrete. Okay? Okay, the last point is uh, how to enable interaction between uh, humans and uh, IoT objects. You got the human machine system is a area of research, a huge area of research. Specifically in the system and cybernetic society, we got this human machine system. I mean the BOG of the SMC society. And very likely we will launch a new IEEE conference on human machine system. Because you know there is a lot of attention on um, human machine system from uh, um, different uh, viewpoints, specific IoT, wearable computing, and um, new new robots, the robots interacting with humans, uh, and, and so on and so forth. Not just, you know, in the industry environment, but also at home. What else? Maybe in some. We can, uh, we can um, discuss about what else with respect to these uh, research challenges. Uh, okay, I have put some references that you can, you know, you got my slides, so you, you can use the references. Thank you very much. All right, folks. Last to you on. So I can see how this connection of things means that you can make a smart building smarter or a hospital smarter. But when you deal with the city, the city that is subject to the institutional aspect of other city functions. You know, traditionally you had you know, the police department, the health department, the education, they all are disconnected and do their own thing. So how would you say to include these changes that are needed to support? And that to me is the most critical thing, more so than the technical aspect. The technical aspect you know how to do. How do you get those institutions to support that and therefore take advantage from it? Yeah, um, yeah, your question is um, very good, pretty good. And um, thank you for, for your question. Because, um, you know, it allows me to highlight other aspects that are the socio-technical, the social part, you know. IoT system, specifically, you know, smart city system. And um, with all the subsystems, you, know, you mentioned the hospital or many other systems, they are social technical. So uh, you don't have just technical stuff, but you have uh, laws. <coughs> In the multi agent system area, we work a lot on this. For example, there is um, an effort in Spain called electronic institutions. It's a framework, agent based framework, that could be, could evolve using not just techno technical aspects, but social or, you know, uh, policy, law aspects. So this is something that uh, was already addressed in the multi-agent system area. And uh, we are trying, you know, to reuse also in IoT. So uh, indeed, uh, in, uh, in my talk, uh, I show and use just, you know, the technical issues. But again, uh, uh, IoT system will be socio-technical systems. So we also need to inject social rules, policies, and, and so on and so forth inside the methodology. This is something that uh, uh, we are aware, but uh, at this, uh, uh, I would say, at this stage, uh, we are not addressing from a research viewpoint. But again, it was addressed in the multi-agent system area. So we could reuse some of the available method methodology able to deal with uh, non-technical aspects. I think they are fundamental. So 
in, uh, you know, I would say in the version of the methodology that will be just the 1.0, but 2.0, we need to insert them for sure, because otherwise we, are, we will not be able to model the reality. So I have a comment and a question for clarification. Uh, so earlier in the seminar, you, you mentioned uh, two movies as examples uh, of the future, and you mentioned The Matrix and Terminator. Well, I think in both movies, uh, the technology wiped out the human race. <laughs> so, uh, those might not be the ideal. Let, let's hope, let's hope for the best. Uh, yeah. uh, my, my question uh, is um, about the, you're talking about the multi-agent systems uh, uh, and incorporating agents into the uh, how, how do you uh, consider like the interaction uh, between these agents uh, and, and, and looking at like comparing the agent uh, based uh, model versus like uh, non agent based model? Is there some kind of feedback loop where you, you reconcile uh, the, the differences that you're, you're getting uh, or similarities between, between the different types of models that you're using? Yeah. Um. Yeah, for sure. First of all, you know, let's hope for the best in the sense that we are going that direction, but hopefully in the po in a positive direction, uh, in the negative one, you know. So, uh, Skynet uh, hopefully will uh, behave in a in a good way, not in a bad in a bad way. But anyway, um, yes, uh, um, you know, uh, if you use our methodology at the very end, uh, you will have a system that is an homogeneous one. So. Uh, According to this methodology, the Acosomed methodology, we are not going to deal with heterogeneous systems. Heterogeneity is, uh, you know, uh, phased at low level, not at high level. At high level, everything is homogeneous. It means that uh, your agents are able to interact with each other using uh, shared ontologies, using shared language, and so on and so forth. Because you are going to develop your system by scratch even though you are supported by a methodology. You don't have nothing, or better still, you have nothing. And then you are going to build something, OK? Uh, a cosmet could be used in this uh, situation. But if you already got systems, and then you'd like to integrate systems, uh, the methodology will not support you in this. You need a, a different methodology. This methodology is the object uh, of, the, uh, of our H2020 project. That is not a COSOMET. It is called the inter-IoT methodology. The idea is you got a heterogeneous system, and then you need to put them together, because they are not able to speak, to speak with each other. Okay? In our case, anyway, agents are homogeneous. So uh, agents, uh, again, uh, are able to interact with each other using shared ontologies, uh, shared languages, uh, shared mechanisms. So it, it's not an issue in our case. It could be an issue if you'd like to model an already existing system using a, an agent-oriented approach. In that case, uh, of course, uh, you need to grant interoperability, because you don't have interoperability. That, and this is why, you know, Interoperability will be a, is already a, and will be in, in the near future a fundamental issue. In that case, uh, we could use an agent-based approach, and uh, using you know agent uh, uh, characteristics uh, um, included uh, uh, the capability agents got to interoperate. But you know, uh, in my opinion, uh, um, this could be done. Uh, but maybe, um, for example, in the inter-IoT project, uh, we use another approach. So I think that uh, if you'd like to use a pure agent-oriented approach, the pure agent-oriented approach works pretty well when you have to develop uh, a system. Uh, you don't have a system, you have to develop it. Uh, uh, otherwise, you know, uh, you could have the same issues uh, you, you have uh, using other paradigms. So it is not a key paradigm for interoperability. This is my point. But if you got an homogeneous system, the agent-oriented approach could be uh, pretty effective in the modeling, uh, in the modeling uh, um, level. 
Then, of, of course, you have to go to the implementation. Uh, at the modeling level, I, according to my opinion, it's a 20 years uh, you know, experience so far, uh, the agent-oriented modeling is very effective, much more effective than other, other um, methods. Uh, of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, in our case, uh, our objective was also to have an agent-based implementation. But again, uh, our, you can use our methodology also if you have other uh, target platforms that are not agent-based. I'll ask one question. Um, following John's question, actually, um, I mean, you know, the, this larger IoT platform that you're sort of discretizing to these various steps is basically a product development exercise, in give or, give or take, in its, in its full extent. So, you know, in the modern technology development practice, uh, basically that has recovered from the old style of uh, business model with some theoretical uh, customer uh, base. The model of product development follows very strictly validation before investment uh, in time. Validation of customers, basically. What is the customer base? What does the customer want? I can almost see how this transient existence of the smart object that you highlighted at the end of your talk, that they can be there, they can be present, and they can disappear at some point could serve this purpose. But it almost seems like it is coming at the tail end rather than on the front end of the product development. So is there any thoughts about how one would address this product, product development work from the point of view of potential customers? Yeah, um, thanks for your question. Um, I got two answers to your question. The first one you know, is the research oriented answer. And uh, in this research, uh, you know, our goal was not uh, to take into account uh, the development of products. So in the methodology, this concept of uh, product uh, driven and then uh, um, customer testing and so on and so forth is not in, is not in. Very likely because, you know, um, the methodology was born in an academic environment, you know, as usual. In the other project, Inter-IoT, we are indeed enforced to do, yeah. to perform this approach, because the European Commission, at the very end of the project, would like to have something that could be sold, not just, you know, finally sold, but uh, you, you, you could be able to create some uh, business model uh, to launch uh, a product. In the um, last review meeting that was the half period uh, project review meeting, they asked us to uh, identify the products and to um, use some you know, business-oriented methodology to uh, validate them before developing them. In that case, we are working uh, using this approach. But I would say that, you know, uh, the one I showed you, it's pretty technical. And uh, it could be complemented with, uh, you know, some uh, non-technical uh, um, methods, social policy, law, but even uh, using some business-oriented perspective. Uh, you know, to do this, uh, uh, we need to have a project. If you don't have a project, uh, being, you know, computer, science researcher, um, I would say that it's not convenient to explore such pathways. But in a project, you have to do it. And uh, in the Inter-IoT project, we are, we, are, we are doing this. If you have just five minutes, I'd like to show you the, the video of Inter-IoT, yeah, video just to give, the, give you the message that is much more you know, business-oriented than, uh, let's say, scientific or uh, research-oriented. I'll decide on everybody's behalf to give you yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's less than five minutes. I got it here. Okay.
Of course, here, you know, the, the, the business idea is the interoperability. Yeah. Okay, so. You see, there are, you know, a, a lot of uh, platforms, you know. These are the products. The five products, the identified products. I see. We got two use cases. One is inter-health, inter, -health, inter -health piece of healthcare and logistics in port. Also, we perform here an analysis of the market just to understand the need for interoperability. So in this case, you know, we, we follow the business-oriented approach because the European Commission now with the new H2020 project would like to have uh, a different approach that is not research, even though, you know, the project is research innovation action, but they would like a business oriented approach. Then, you know, um, our reviewers are from companies, so <laughs> we need to work for them in a, in a sense that they would like to have much more uh, concrete applied research with possible uh, product-driven uh, development. And, uh, for example, in this project, we, my, my group, because you know, we, are, we are expert in methodology, we propose a methodology for interoperability. But the methodology is strongly connected with the products. So the methodology support the integrator of IoT system in doing the integration. It is a six, it's a phase, in, uh, sorry, a process with six phases. But in, in such phases, um, the integrator will reuse the products we develop. And uh, this was uh, maybe um, the main key factor because we were evaluated 15 out of 15. was, you know, a, a very good evaluation because we put also the methodology able to, to drive everything. And uh, this was appreciated. But of course, then, uh, you know, the European Commission would like to have products or at least the business model and... Uh, so. In, 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 the, in the project, we got several companies. So the companies, um, uh, you know, the, the, the aim of such companies to create business models to to push, you know, our research close to the market. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you very much, Ricardo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.